The scenes were something out of Dante's Inferno, and it's still ongoing. More than 10 miles of flame in downtown Kiev, the capital city of the Ukraine, the battleground between the Anglo-American New World Order and the collapsed former Soviet attempted world order. And you have the George Soros CIA globalist funded groups, many of which have real beefs with the government, absolutely going wild, absolutely attacking and shooting police. They've stolen thousands of, quote, firearms from the military and police, calling for the country to join the EU. They're mad that the government a few months ago, and there was also a vote uh, in their parliament, did not enter the EU. Listen, I don't want them to join Russia or the EU. How about we have sovereign countries again that aren't dominated by corrupt kleptocratic empires? The bottom line here is just like the Syria civil war, it is the West quarterbacking and running this entire operation. And it is absolutely incredible. Under law, folks, when you start the preemptive war, you're the bad guy. AKA Hitler, AKA Mussolini, AKA so many other examples that we know of historically like Napoleon, the list goes on and on. The British Redcoats coming to confiscate the guns and shooting people. This is the real issue that we're dealing with. And it is so frustrating to see neocon organizations and the so-called left in this country as well, calling them freedom fighters, ladies and gentlemen. When in most cities in the U.S., if you peacefully go out and demonstrate, you'll get arrested or beat up, and that's all wonderful. But when these people are throwing Molof cocktails on police that have been very restrained in the last month of this and shooting them, and then the police fire back, and, and by the way, it's an elected government that's not even pro-Russia, I, 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 I should add, but did not join the EU to be absolutely uh, imploded. And now the EU is calling for sanctions on Ukraine. Just like they did on Serbia to then further depress it and break it up and break the country into multiple pieces. This is incredible balkanization. European Union told uh, that they're going to hold emergency meetings. Of foreign ministers as leaders warned sanctions are likely following the latest clashes. That's right. Just like there'd be sanctions in Egypt if they didn't let the Muslim Brotherhood take over and then start crucifying them Christians and blowing up their churches. And again, it's not that I back the military junta uh, in Egypt. It's a lot better than Al-Qaeda. And again, why is our government involved? Why are they backing it? Why do they start the war in Libya, start the war in Syria, and put people conservatively more than 10 times worse in? Who then destabilize the whole region, pour out of Syria now into Iraq, retook Fallujah, and are killing the Iraqi military and U.S. advisors. I mean, this is a policy of chaos, and George Soros and Brzezigny Brzezinski and all these anti-Russian types are right at the middle of it, folks, starting wars on the steps of Russia, just like Napoleon and Hitler, and it is wrong, 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 wrong. And the British Empire has been trying to bring down Russia for 300 years. They've been allied with them back and forth, World War I, you name it. But this is a total double cross in 1917, putting the Bolsheviks in. We, we should apologize to the Russians. Do you know where the commies came from? Our government, look it up, 50,000 brigade level, multi-brigade. How many brigades is 50,000? That's, that's a whole bunch. It's like eight, 10 of them sent out of New York, communist, paramilitary, money out of London to overthrow Moscow, folks, and then kill tens of millions of people. Our, our criminal elite did that. They created the stinking cesspit that is Russia. And in every case, whether it was Libya uh, or Tunisia or Egypt or Syria or what we're seeing unfold uh, in other parts of the world, it is the globalist, it is the Ford Foundation, Google and others who later brag and it comes out that they are the ones who are out there funding the organizations to start the rioting to begin with. And the big think tanks admit in the last few years, and we've covered it here on air, 
and even traveled to England to cover it uh, at the very same hotel where Google met secretly with MI6 and others to plan the Arab Spring. The banksters are devaluing currencies worldwide. That only hurts you if you live in America or live in, say, England. But if you live in a place like Egypt and 55% of your disposable income that might be $600, $700 a year is food, and food prices double, what happens if 55% of your money in 2010 in Egypt, we can look up the numbers, this is one example, you're spending 55% of your money on food, and then suddenly over the next few years it doubles. Do the math, that's 110% of your money. You begin to starve, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the Egyptians, they're very skinny now. They weren't just a few years ago. They are starving. The globalists have actuaries on record. They know with these computer programs, war games, on record. They know when you're going to order at Amazon before you order it and already ship it, okay? I've been telling you about this for a long time, now it's mainstream news. Not because I'm smart, it's been all, in all the MIT papers for decades. But that was their holy grail, that they've attained it in the last decade. And now they can game everything. They know how to manipulate oil prices, food prices, you name it, to make a country blow up. And they know when it's going to blow up. So they show up a month before it's going to blow up. And they know how it's going to blow up with a pro-liberty, egalitarian uh, awakening movement in Egypt that is going to put down the Muslim Brotherhood and even put down the government control and create a golden age in Egypt. There was a lot of stuff lining up for that with a lot of youth that had you know, gotten into freedom and things. And the system said, we're not going to let that happen, just like they did in 53 in Iran when pro-America Mossadegh was in there. They put in the radical jihadis to overthrow it. Then they double-crossed them and put the Shah in. Just like they put Al-Qaeda into Libya because they were helping Africa. Libya was building up all of Africa like a real IMF would do. And, and working with the West, and Gaddafi bought into all of it, was meeting with all the European presidents and had apologized for stuff and invested most of his money with big U.S. banks. They set him up, folks. He opened up everything, built big hotels, was giving money to all of Africa. He'd, he'd live in a tent. I'm not, I'm not romanticizing Muammar Gaddafi, but compared to our leaders, you know, he's the real deal. Self-made, ladies and gentlemen. And actually spent 99% of the dictator wealth on the people. Not allowed, ladies and gentlemen. Not allowed. They put Al-Qaeda in there. They put burqas back on the women's heads. And they killed all the minority Muslims and the blacks in the country. On record, 40,000 blacks lined up and shot or ch chopped up with machetes by the Al-Qaeda people out of Saudi Arabia who are extremely anti-black. That's why I never get why a lot of blacks are big Wahhabist and, and follow that particular part of Islam in those groups because, man, I've read their writings on black people. It makes the Ku Klux Klan sound pro-black. I, I I, you ought to go read it yourself if you want to. I'm not going to repeat it on air. Uh, but the, I guess I'm racist. I'm not, I don't want to kill the black people. But anyways, uh, the whole point here, ladies and gentlemen, is that that's what's going on in Kiev right now. And I saw on Fox News last night with Shepard Smith, when I got off the show in the afternoon, I knew there was fires going on for weeks. This river of flame, we found one from the air, but that's small. It was at nighttime. And it went for 10 miles with the, with the buildings and the skyscrapers and just went on and on. Hundreds of feet of flame going for miles like a Dante's Inferno. We're trying to find it. The crew's doing a great job. We're digging around for it. And we can just go TiVo, Shepard Smith's show from yesterday. They had it up on that big jumbotron. And uh, it, it was incredible where he was pointing it all out. And they're calling them protesters and freedom fighters in our news. And ladies and gentlemen, these people are shooting the police preemptively. They've been given weapons, obviously. And I'm a pro-Second Amendment guy. If they were overthrowing a communist government, I'd say hooray, hooray. If they were overthrowing an unelected government, I'd say good, good for you. They're not. It's an elected government that didn't vote to join the EU a month ago, and all hell broke loose. And the EU on record is to come in, take over your country, hand over all the infrastructure, and bankrupt it on record. I mean, who wants to join the EU? That's like joining a sinking ship. But it's all about taking down Russia. 
People go, well, good, we need to take down Russia. Folks, the globalists are taking us down with Agenda 21, our farms, our ranches, our businesses, our power plants. We don't want to be part of the criminal elements of Wall Street and the Bank of England and others that are wrecking all these different countries. This is very evil. This is economic warfare. And believe me, folks, if the police in this country are ordered to go out and confiscate guns, civil war like this times, let's not exaggerate, we're a lot bigger country, a lot bigger population. Let me be conservative. Civil war of this, I'd say 50 times this. Because by the way, people aren't just going to start burning trash cans and stuff. Um, patriots, libertarians, conservatives don't ever protest, you notice. Uh, because when they do, they protest like 1776. And it's, it's not going to be pretty. And the globalists actually want to maneuver this. And this is what I want to explain to you today. What we're seeing in Kiev and what we see going on there and what we see happening there is a microcosm of how the globalists operate. They don't usually invade your country. They don't uh, usually come in with an overwhelming force openly. The Bushes did that, and that was against main globalist policy, but the establishment let them do it as a test. They do it by fomenting opposition and overthrow groups and balkanization and destabilization programs. Then they take over that country and use it the next phase to exploit to the next country, try to infiltrate and overthrow it. That's how the globalists operate, through subversion. It's on record. And they have already created in the last 60 years through the different foundations the Carnegie, the, the Ford Foundation, mainly on that case, teaching that the Southwest belongs to Mexico, teaching that whites are inherently racist in all the high schools, all the colleges. I went to college. I went to high school. I was taught that in Dallas. I was taught that in Austin in high school. I was taught that at community college, and so I didn't go to main college. Every class, it could be math. It could be U.S. history. It could be psychology. I was taking a bunch of courses to see what I liked. It was white people are bad. America's bad. Uh, the Southwest belongs to Mexico, and we're going to have a communist takeover, and we're going to take the guns, and uh, all of you white people should be ashamed of yourselves. This was all coming out of white people's mouths. And when I wrote papers against it, they would give me uh, Fs, and I would write misspelled as a test, screwed up ones, worshiping communism and stuff as a sick joke. I did it a few times. They would give me A pluses and invite me for coffee afterwards. And I said, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm going to go do an access TV show. The only place I can get on air, I'm going to fight these people. And now you see the universities, you see it, it everywhere. I mean, it is just incredible what is going on so that they can then have the riots start up whenever they want in this country. You don't just think they're going to come for the guns and then leave it at that and have a civil war over that. No, no, no. They're going to stage some race stuff and get the Southwest burning. And then it'll be, oh, there'll be sanctions on the U.S. if they don't let this become its own autonomous zone where they put us into a North American union, what Obama's going to Mexico right now to do. And then they always then have a super union with, with the old groups, the old countries, broken up into small little groups within it. So globalism is the opposite of unity and the opposite of sovereignty. It's totally exploitive, totally predatory. And so you watch. Uh, Ukraine will be much worse in a year than it is now. If they would have gone under the EU, it would have been much worse for them. And this is what the government of the Ukraine now gets because they didn't join the EU, the incredibly predatory EU. And when they voted a month ago, remember, to not join, I said, that's it, get ready for their cities to burn. On record, it's not hard. You don't join NATO. You don't join the EU. They're going to overthrow your country just like Serbia. In that case, they brought in radical Wahhabist Muslims out of Albania, had them blow up churches, shoot little kids on the street. The Serbs got mad, attacked them. I mean, I'm not, and again, I'm not taking sides for the Serb folks. I, I, I have no Slavic blood in me. I, I've never been to Serbia. I just studied real geopolitics and what actually happened under Bill Clinton. And you know, they, they would have a guy with tuberculosis wanting into a food, food tent that had wire around it. And Time Magazine and Newsweek and all of them would show it and CNN going, look at this starving man in a Serb concentration camp. It was all lies, folks. The Serbs in the UN zone numbers lost double to triple, depending on which war, in the 90s and were always the ones being attacked. Just like when the Syrians fight back against the outside Al-Qaeda invasion, oh, it's a horrible atrocity. And they brought in the Al-Qaeda into the south, and they took a third of the country. Kosovo is a drug running around, and now they're still attacking up into the rest of the country. 
And, and this is how the globalists operate. And they bombed Belgrade and the rest of the country with depleted uranium. Why not give old uh, Clinton five peace prizes for that? All because it was a sovereign country and they broke it up, folks. After the fall of the Soviet Union, and, and, and you know, Tito had been dead a long time, all that, that whole place was getting along fine. The whole Balkans, where we get the term Balkanization, the whole Balkans was getting along until the West came in and did that, just like the Middle East. This is such an evil divide and conquer policy. It is so bad, and they're gonna do it here in America. The ambassadors don't even know where the countries are they're being sent to and brag about it and can't speak any of the language, and it is very insulting uh, to the people that uh, are having these ambassadors sent to them. Usually you send an ambassador who's an American citizen but had family there and a culture there if you want to get anything done. Like if you know the U.S. ambassador to England should generally be an Anglophile and have family in England and you know have some background there and know about British culture or U.K. Uh, culture. And it's just an example. I mean, there's Obama's ambassador to Norway, knows nothing about Norway, and brags he knows nothing about Norway. But, but I know quite a bit about Ukraine. Really smart, great people. They've had it really hard in between Europe and those wars and in between the old czars and then the Russians under communism. But this is a new empire of the EU and the globalist teamed up with the Anglo-American establishment coming in to take over and, and privatize everything and absolutely just drag these people through the mud. And there's problems with the government. There's corruption. There's all the standard stuff. They're, they've been putting new governments in every couple of years over there. This government's just trying to be neutral. And it looks like on a lot of fronts was trying to be nice to the Russians and nice to the EU and just trying to have f trade and saying, we'll just be on our own. No, thank you. The EU looks like a bad deal. And of course, they activated Soros. And I mean, Soros is like herpes or something. I mean, he just is the gift that keeps on giving. Do I need to say anything more about what's happening in the Ukraine, but that George Soros is on record right in the middle of it? What an uncool person. And look at what they did back in 2008 with the neocons. It's the same agenda. Starting a war with Russia in South Ossetia and Abkhazia in northern Georgia. We almost had a nuclear war right there. And our media said Russia had attacked Georgia. They had national news say that I was a collaborator because I came out and said that we attacked the Russians. Later, they had to admit that was the case. They ran a hoax, folks. They could start a war tomorrow with the Russian border territory, a demilitarized zone. They've got a bunch of those. And, and, and we'd have nuclear war, and we'd always be told the Russians did it. That's how big these hoaxes are. That's how evil this government is. It's not our government, ladies and gentlemen. It is criminal elements that are playing all countries off against each other because they can consolidate power during chaos. Because while the Catholic and um, Orthodox people are lined up killing each other and attacking each other, being manipulated, uh, in Ukraine, the globalists sit back and laugh. Just like here, it'll be black or white, or white versus Hispanic, or north versus south, or man versus woman, or gay versus straight. Why don't we all just agree on Bill of Rights, Constitution, due process, private property, right to defense, and be like, I'm for freedom, and you are a status. See, people need to be in gangs. They need to be in clubs. They need to be in tribes. They need to be in packs. That's how we are. But it should be, I'm part of the invention pack. I'm part of the trailblazer pack. I'm part of the honorable pack. You know, in real business that's still in this country, it gets the word gets out, oh, that's an honorable law firm. That's an honorable CPA. That's an honorable florist. That's an honorable uh, repair guy. That's an honorable good painter. And, and you know what? They can charge more, and they get the business, and anyone with a brain works with them. And then all the losers just feed on the unwashed masses that don't know what they're doing. The most valuable thing in this world is being honorable. And as Dr. Paul Craig Roberts has said many times, America in the last decade has lost its soft power. We've lost our soft power where people respected us so much that they would basically work with America, and that really helped our country. There's nothing wrong with having an empire of ideas, an empire of trade, an empire of goodwill, if it's consensual.
consensual collectivism is great, where we all agree on liberty, so we collectivize our will to make the world better. But it doesn't mean we collectivize and give up our will to join a collective. Oh, no, 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 no. See, collectivists are like the corporate Borg. And so as, as people that are individuals, we think, well, I won't work with anybody because I'm not a collectivist. That, that's not collectivism. That's teamwork, ladies and gentlemen. And the minute we figure out the difference between that and, 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 this, and this robo sapien humanoid garbage that is collectivism, this trendiness, uh, this just, just accepting whatever the latest propaganda is, the minute we do that is the minute we begin to turn the tide. Now, I got a bunch of other news to cover as well, and we've got a bunch of big guests coming up today, but I'd like to get your take on what's happening over in the Ukraine uh, as well. Lennon LaRouche has been wanting to come on for weeks about this, and we finally uh, got him on. Uh, he says it could turn into World War III. I agree. Joseph Farah is going to be coming on to talk about a host of issues, Obama becoming a dictator, uh, and so much more. That of WorldNet Daily. That is all coming up today. But uh, I've got some other comments on this as well. I mean, sanctions on Ukraine, their police have been incredibly restrained. The, uh, the CIA, that is the criminal elements of it, controlled by the globalist and George Soros, are over there involved in this to take down the final piece up to the wall with Russia to start a new Cold War when Russia is trying to reform and has been reaching out to us. That is illegitimate. That is fraudulent. A major universities have come out with studies just yesterday that the U.S. continues to drop in press freedom, just like Russia. But economically, Russia is going up in economic freedom while we're going down. Russia is becoming more free in many ways than we are. China is becoming more free in some ways than we are in major studies. Look them up. And it is extremely, extremely frustrating to see this going on. But there are a lot of factoids and, and learning events we can have within this larger event that are extremely informative to the larger world. It's, it's, it's an educational experience. A, this is how the globalists take down countries and, 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 and put in new regimes, is they create global economic climates that make it very hard all over the world, especially in the th what you'd call the, the poor old world, like Ukraine, they're poor compared to us. It's rough. The people just know the government is, is in charge. Hey, the EU was going to make it better. They promised. The majority of Ukrainians don't want to join. We don't care. That's you Orthodox Christians that are pro-Russia in the east of Ukraine. We're going to burn down your churches. They are absolutely just playing people off against each other mindlessly. Mindlessly. And the globalists will play Muslim off against Catholic in another country and you know, blow up their churches. The globalists don't care. They're going after everybody, and it's disgusting. So this is what they want to do in America with all this race politics and race division. And you wonder why there's all these mobs of young black people running around beating up whites everywhere, and the media tries to cover it up. Because that's just the beginning of the fomenting so that we'll all fight with each other while the globalists rob us with Obamacare, rob us with the control of energy and gouging and the power plants, rob us with the dumbing down, rob us with the fines, the fees, the taxes, rob us with the NAFTA, the GATT, the TPP, all the new trade deals that are just specialized deals. But separately, militarily, you've got a country that doesn't have a Second Amendment where it's all very hard to get a gun, basically a gun ban. And you've got the citizens with a little bit of training because, you know, the CIA guys and the, and the $5 billion they've spent in the last year. On record, that guys, pull up an article. $5 billion spent by, quote, U.S. foundations in Ukraine in the last 12 months. $5 billion spent in the last year and in a couple of months, I guess 14 months, since the beginning of 2012, to put in color revolution groups, honchoed by the usual suspect, he's going to get your guns and your free speech too. I'll get you and your little dog too. George Soros, the Nazi collaborator, because he loves you and he's a democratizer. No, he wants that country to loot the daylights out of it like they've done Greece and Spain and everywhere else. They want control of that government. They want control of those national bank accounts. They want control of the national assets. And they're going to then use that country to leverage it against all its neighbors. They're going to bring down the breadbasket of Europe right now. Ukraine, the biggest wheat producer in the whole region. 
absolutely insane. Let me check it out right here. I'm going to pull it up right now. I'm going to go to the old NSA search engine, and I'm going to say $5 billion, $5 billion. We have it. American, okay, global research. American conquest by subversion. Victoria uh, Newlands admits Washington has spent $5 billion to subvert Ukraine. That's a quote. Uh, print that for me, and they'll have great bibliography at the bottom. That's global research. After three visits to Ukraine in five weeks, Victoria Newland from the State Department explains that the past two decades, no, no, it's the last year, the United States has spent $5 billion to subvert Ukraine and assures her listeners that there are prominent businesses and government officials who support the U.S. project to tear Ukraine away from its historic relationship with Russia and into a U.S. sphere of influence via Europe. It's not a U.S. sphere, it's a banker's sphere. And then it just goes on. And then she's given low numbers at that Exxon event she was at. It's $5 billion in the last 14, 15 months. But I'm digressing. Imagine the magnitude of that. That they're financing this. And imagine if we went out. Can you imagine if a million people took to D.C. and then started burning things? all over the place and, and, and shooting police with firearms. They'd have helicopter gunships out killing thousands. They would probably nerve gas people. That's on record under the Sunshine Project. Got leaked documents in 2000 that the Marine Corps standing by in every region with helicopters in mothballs with nerve gas at the locations ready to be nozzled on to fly around and kill people. And they also have opiate bombs, uh, which is basically heroin, where they fly over and spray that, but they say that kills more than 10% of people because you fall over and hit your head, you wreck your car, fire start. They say might as well just nerve gas people. You can, by the way, go read those. They were, they were actually declassified, and the Marine Corps freaked out. And they were reclassified. I had the head of the project on. He got so threatened, they shut the project down, but then the Marines couldn't get Google to take it off the Wayback Machine. That is Google, isn't it? Look up Sunshine Project Helicopters. Uh, Austin, Texas, because that was where one of the plans came out. And the point is, they'd send out, you better have heavy-duty hazmat gear, folks, you want to do what they're doing in D.C. They're going to hit you with at least opiate knockout gas, a.k.a. Um, close encounters of the third kind or whatever it is. Where, you know, they knock out the whole town so they won't see the space aliens land. Uh, bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, that is the plan. That is the plan is to use helicopters on you. Now, we got a Congress with a 6% approval rating. Obama's openly a dictator. Obama's openly trying to train the military that gun owners and veterans are the main enemy. They're converting the whole system of the military-industrial complex in NORTHCOM over to go after the American people. It's high treason. And the American people really have the right, and I think the duty, until you realize that's what they want us to do, to actually do what the Ukrainians are doing everywhere that state governments don't sign on to the republic and announce the federal government's been hijacked and is illegitimate. But I don't want people to do that. But under the Declaration of Independence, you have a right and kind of a pig-headed duty to fight this. But see, I fight in the info war because as the Pentagon says, 90% of war is psychological. So I'm talking right to the Pentagon. You really want to help bring America down with the foreign banks? You really want to be collaborators like Vichy French? No, you don't. Good. Do whatever you can to leak the tyranny, expose it, don't go along with it. We're going to stop it. Just like you did with Syria not backing Al-Qaeda. Good job. We're going to stop this together. We can do this, folks. We don't want violence. We don't want them to be able to start a civil war where we kill the police and military, they kill us. Then the multinationals come in later. As the Peace Force... After America not having power for a year in many areas, the public accepted the U.N. Peace Force. As Henry Kissinger said back in 2000, he said, uh, Americans, Americans would never accept the U.N. occupation of the New World Order. But a big enough crisis, they would happily accept the United Nations peacekeepers in Los Angeles. And pull the quote up. So that's the issue here. And this isn't rhetoric what you're hearing. This is the real issue of what's unfolding. This is the real issue of what's happening and what's going on. And this is the same program they're going to use in us as different permutations, different implementations of it. And we are just on the brink of, of, uh, of the whole world getting more and more unstable as the British Ministry of Defense put out in 2007, uh, in their 
report. The London Guardian carried it. It's uh, flash mobs and brain chips, a frightening view of the future from the British Ministry of Defense. That's the actual headline. I'm going to pull it up. Uh, flash mobs and brain chips, a frightening view of the future by the Ministry of Defense. I added British. Revolution, flash mobs, and brain chips, a grim vision of the future. I almost got it. London Guardian, did I get the year right? Yeah, 2007, April 8th. And then you can read the whole multi-hundred page report when you link through uh, on the PDF. And because this is what's being engineered, global economic shutdown, desperate populations, with the globalists there to finance revolutions before the real ones start, to then have the revolution then be dialed back in to even more globalist multinational control. Oh, you don't like how you're poor now in Ukraine? Let the EU come in. We'll make it better. EU comes in. A couple years later, they bankrupt even more. Let the EU openly appoint your presidents and leaders now. We'll fix it. The public goes along. Suddenly, the public doesn't. Oh, my gosh, your neighbor declared war on you. In recent decades, worldwide social change has experienced unprecedented historical acceleration, particularly because instant mass communications, such as radio, television, and the internet, cumulatively have been stimulating a universal awakening of mass political consciousness. The resulting widespread rise in worldwide populist activism is proving inimical to external domination of the kind that prevailed in the age of colonialism and imperialism. Persistent and highly motivated populist resistance of politically awakened and historically resentful peoples to external control has proven to be increasingly difficult to suppress as protracted guerrilla warfares in Vietnam, Algeria, or Afghanistan have amply demonstrated. And as the rising turmoil in both the Middle East and Southwest Asia are foreshadowing. That's the big Brzezinski acting like all the things are happening. They're not behind it. So again, they know about the awakening. So they're going to hijack it. Before it happens, it's like Red Adair would detonate TNT, the famous oil well fighter, on top the oil well. With a bigger explosion to knock out the explosion. So that's how they describe it. They know when a country is about to melt down because they're manipulating the economics of it. They have the supercomputers on record. They go in with their revolution groups that are standing by to go, the answer is more government and more gun control and more open borders and more taxes. That'll make it great. Look, I'm trendy. They literally hire trendies and, and buy off local news reporters and people to be part of the movement, to act like they're against the government, to then get control. That group stays in a few years, gets paid off, acts like they're opposition against the new revolution group, so they just create synthetic revolution. That's why the revolution can't be just a new revolution, a new group. It has to be an idea. So that there's a manifesto, so that you, ours is the Declaration of Independence, Bill of Rights, Constitution. It goes past religion, race. Hey, I want my private property. I want my due process. I want my privacy. I want my own children. I want to run my own life. As long as I don't hurt anybody else, I want to be free. And I don't want government taking my tax money and giving it to select groups to build monopolies. You just right there enshrined everything that is true liberalism, true veritas, true constitutionalism called right-wing hardcore extremism today. The labels mean nothing, ladies and gentlemen. What we have is a criminal, kleptocratic, global cabal using high-tech, Delphi techniques and other social engineering to manipulate the population. I only got this next segment and one more before LaRouche comes on. I want to hear from people, serious callers. Do you disagree with me on Ukraine? But, I mean, can you imagine if we were shooting police like that, what they would say? Notice these globalist-funded revolutions are always burn some stuff, shoot some cops. A real revolution would be marked down where all the globalists live and then just have an idea like V for Vendetta where you all go one day and do something. It's an idea. You can't stop it. You can't find the cells. There are no cells. These aren't real revolutions. They don't want to teach real revolution. 
You know what our founders did once they started coming after us? Once they started sending out death warrants on patriots? They're death warrants on them. Two-way street. Oh, no, we're all taught, go shoot a cop. Just some random cop out there. That's how you have a revolution or George Soros. You just go, pop, shoot a cop in the head. And then, oh, it's a hero, all this other. That's how communists roll, folks. That's what this garbage is, and it's wrong. It's globalist funded from the bowels of hell, ladies and gentlemen. Know your enemy. Identify who's behind it. You want to talk about violence, and I don't want that to happen. I want to be in the info war, but I want to show the police who are getting these armored vehicles and all this preparing for war what will happen with a crowd, even of Soros morons, what they can do with Molov cocktails and fire. Uh, you know, the police roll in these armored vehicles and try to stop the protesters burning down buildings, and they all uh, sit there. By the way, I mean, it's so cowardly. You've got the, the military there and the police. They've got a machine gun on top. They don't even open fire. They've been told not to. And they roll in to try to stop them setting fires, and they throw fire all over the armored vehicle, and it burns up and blows up, obviously cooking the police inside. Uh, I mean, listen, I'm rolling up, and I've got a, a heavy machine gun on the top of my armored vehicle, and you're throwing Molov cocktails at me? I'm going to open fire on you, period. And... That's what I'm telling you. The police have been told, stand down, stand down, so all this can happen because the government knew it was unpopular to join the EU. I told you this weeks ago, they're playing patty cake. They're involved in this, folks. They're encouraging this takeover. You watch. This is rotten, 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 rotten. But the point is, is that your armored vehicles aren't going to help you if there's a real civil war in this country. Of course, real revolutionaries aren't going to go after you when you're in your armored vehicle. In fact, real revolutionaries aren't going to go after the guys who are in the armored vehicles when they're at the bar. We're not going to go after you unless you come after us. We're going to go after your bosses. We're going to go after them where they live. And everybody knows that. All right? We're going to go after the people pulling the strings. We're not your enemy, police and military, and you know that. But the whole point is, is that they are trying to maneuver us in this situation, and we need to stop it. Here's the toll-free number. I want quick calls. Just your take on Ukraine, uh, where you think it's going. It's obviously staged. It doesn't mean there aren't bad on both sides, but this is just bad news, folks. The globals are trying to overthrow any sovereign country they can, from Syria to Ukraine. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. And our Congress voted last week to endorse all this. And to call these people heroes and call for sanctions, give the police fire back when fired upon. And I mean, I'm sorry, folks, it's cowardly to shoot a cop who isn't shooting at you. I don't want to sign on to every globalist revolution that comes along because the Ukraine wouldn't sign on to the EU and be politically taken over. I image uh, Saruman the wizard talking to Gandalf and he says, I tried to have you aid and join me willingly, but you have chosen the path of pain. And that's basically what they've done to the Ukraine. And it's totally lawless. It's totally illegal. It's, it's, it'd be like if the Russians were trying to get Mexico to break up and, you know, become an enemy of the U.S. or something. Uh, it, is, it is absolutely bad guy behavior. And it's not even our government. It's George Soros and the foundations that have already hijacked us. That's the thing. It's all done in our name. It is outrageous. And they will do the same garbage here, ladies and gentlemen. There's Kurt Nemo's article, Soros-supported protesters turn violent Ukraine. Protesters want country to integrate with European Union. That's right. Join with the big super state or we'll burn and shoot everyone. That's foreign sedition, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care what the protesters were saying. We're going to burn everything if you don't join this political group from the outside. <laughs> That's globalism. That's the new world order. They come finance an idiot group, a minority of the people in Ukraine to burn everything if people don't go along with this. It's outrageous. And our media calls them freedom fighters. It's like they called the Serb rebels. The, 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 the Muslims uh, heroes and they called Al-Qaeda and Syria heroes. Cops tase deaf man waving... Uh, having diabetic attack now. All I see articles every day where somebody's passing out or having a diabetic attack or deaf or mentally retarded, and they beat them up or kill them. Bush era diplomat says Ukraine situation a threat to U.S. national security. Outspoken neocon says activists shooting cops are friends of liberty. That's a quote. Justice group 
warns of Obama plan to put government monitors in newsrooms. Oh, it's already starting. Yeah, we're going to cover that. Does the trail of dead bankers lead somewhere? Yes, it does. And we're going to get into uh, so much more. New Jersey police chief speaks out against town council corruption and gets relieved of duties. American Stasi police start staring us in the face. Very important article by Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. Let's go to one call, then more calls in the next segment. We got uh, Raptor Man calling from New York. We got uh, Tom in Maryland, Judy, Habu, Julio, and others. Tom, uh, thanks for calling in. You're a retired police officer. You want to comment on Ukraine? What do you think of what's happening? Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for your position on pointing out that uh, we as police can also get caught up and be victims as well. I'm a retired cop. I also worked with the Netherlands National Police Force in the 90s for a period of time. And cops everywhere uh, have a lot in common. I've not been to too many countries where you find a lot of differences. You have a few bad apples, but for the most part... Uh, police are citizens who are simply trying to do their job. Uh, it's a perfect segue, though. I wanted to point out we're so fortunate right now in America that we have a judicial system that allows us to wage a real, quote-unquote, civil war on paper. And I think it would be great with your platform if you could uh, – have some focus on what we as individuals can do. I'll tell you what, stay there. I don't want to get your take on Ukraine. We're coming right back. Stay there. Don't hang up, uh, Raptor Man. All right, we're going back to, uh, were, were we talking to Raptor Man or Tom in Maryland? Oh, it was Tom in Maryland. Then we'll go back to Raptor Man. I got the names mixed up. Okay, uh, uh, Tom, make your point about Ukraine then, and then talk about how we can use the judicial system, the court system. I agree. It's actually very powerful. People just don't know their rights and don't use it. We've gotten to this position because we uh, because we become very jellyfish-like. Uh, free people will be free. Uh, uh, people that act like sheep will be slaves. Uh, but go ahead and give us your take on Ukraine first. Sure. Two quick points on, on that, and I'll jump right into the court system real fast. Uh, as far as Ukraine is concerned, uh, who knows who may have caused the first outbreak of violence that may not have been justified. Certainly when it gets to this point, nobody's going to win in a situation like that. And I've heard you say it before. And I think most people realize that when it gets to the point where you're throwing bottles and you're killing people, nothing good is going to come from that. Uh, there's the outlet, even if you if you're in a country where there's not a judicial system to utilize, like we're lucky enough to have, you still have words and you can still appeal to basic human common sense. And most people are going to be receptive to that. I've been in situations where uh, myself and my partner were outnumbered and the crowd could have crushed us, could have done what they wanted to. You look for somebody who's in a position of leadership within the crowd because they all have one or two, usually more, and you appeal to their basic sense of being a fellow human I know, my being. point, have you seen the images of riot police that are just standing there being shot uh, by the so-called freedom-fighting protesters? Uh, I mean, my issue is, imagine if we had protesters shooting police, what our media would say. It just shows how this is all being run by criminal elements in this country and in, in, in the EU as well, and how it's a total double standard. I mean, I want to be called a freedom fighter because I go out and have a pro-Second Amendment rally, not, you know, some extremist or, or get arrested. Meanwhile, these people are shooting police that have done nothing because they want to burn down the government building. And again, I don't like seeing police shooting people that are unarmed, and I don't like watching people shoot the police and I've got to say the Ukrainian police are extremely restrained because let me tell you, I don't care if I was a cop or not. You start shooting at me, I'm going to shoot at you. And it just really upsets me. I appreciate your call, Tom. You're right. We should talk about more ways to wage war peacefully. The voting box, the ballot box, the grand jury box, uh, the soap box. I mean, there's just so much we got to do here. Uh, but the image of George Soros funded people shooting riot cops. I mean, 10 feet away, boom. And it's like, hero, oh, you're such a hero. No, you're, you're worse than a cop beating some woman with a billy club. See, I don't like bullies, folks. And, and the police have been extremely restrained over there, and now all hell's breaking loose. Let's jam in one more. Then we'll go to uh, Raptor Man, Habu, and uh, Julio uh, inside of the interview with, um, it's all on Ukraine, with Lennon LaRouche. We'll get to talk to him. Judy, go ahead. 
Hi, Alex. Um, I think one of the things that needs to be uh, brought to the forefront, maybe, is uh, the port of Sevastopol in the Black Sea. If people don't understand the gravity of the situation of Russia actually losing that port, uh, that is a huge indicator of just how uh, important this this whole uh, massacre in uh, Kiev is, is what, it, what it really is all about, because they don't want to lose their port. Russia does not want to lose that port. And uh, the other thing I just want to say real real quick is that I think in terms of what, how we need to talk to men in America, I think there has to be a bit of compassion only because we've been, you know, so prosperous. And this is such a, a horrific turn of events that is, that is taking place in our nation that they're not necessarily jellyfish as much as they are. They're scared out of their wits. And, and, and they don't know what to do, and they don't have like, you're a great caller. If you want to hold, I'll come back to you. But Lennon LaRouge is coming up for, what, 30 minutes. Uh, you'll get to talk to him if you want. Ladies and gentlemen, we are broadcasting worldwide. Thank you so much. Well, as soon as the Ukraine refused to enter into the U European Union last month, uh, all hell broke loose there in the country with Soros-backed NGOs trying to destabilize the country. Uh, we now see arms being served up to the so-called liberty-loving uh, freedom fighters, as they're being called on our news, to shoot the police that have been, until now, very, very restrained. Again, folks, you know that uh, I am not a uh, Ruski file. I, I don't have some uh, darling love of the uh, Russian government or, or any of those systems. I do have a liking for peace and not having nuclear war. And I also like common law and common sense, and I wouldn't like the Russians uh, trying to foment sectarian violence to break up Mexico and start a civil war there to destabilize the United States. Uh, we have the State Department minions. I have the articles right here. We're going to talk to Lyndon LaRouge about it in just a moment. Uh, openly bragging that they've spent $5 billion to destabilize the country. Uh, America conquest by subversion. Victoria Newland admits Washington spent five billion to quote subvert Ukraine. There's there's video of that, and uh, this is a serious situation. We saw them try to start war in 2008 with the Russians. We've seen them in Syria try to hand that over to Al Qaeda. They know revolution's coming because of world economic meltdown. They want to preemptively start it, in my view, to try to bring chaos out of it. So they can then pose as the saviors. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And it's extremely immoral that Congress a few weeks ago passed a resolution praising the uh, violent demonstrators and saying the government should just let them take over. Um, again, uh, I try to study the Ukrainian situation. The world's a very complex place. I'm not saying the government's perfect, uh, but they're trying to remain neutral. This is one of the biggest geopolitical things in, in a long time right now. Uh, and is part of a proxy war with Russia. Make no mistake, Syria was about that too. And George Soros is, is, is in there as always stirring things up. And a man who multiple directors of central intelligence uh, said had one of the best private intelligence networks in the world, you can look that up, uh, was Lyndon LaRouge. He was uh, read by Ronald Reagan, you name it. Some call him a leftist, some a right winger. The media always demonizes him just with a term, oh, LaRouge, so that you won't look into what he's actually said and done. Uh, the analysis is spot on. You can disagree with some of the solutions, but they've been calling uh, this stuff before it happens. And he joins us right now uh, to break this down. Thank you for coming on, sir. But first off, you heard my little my little layout there of what I think is happening. Do you think that's accurate, A, and then B, expand on it? Uh, what's What are we facing here? It needs a lot more. There's a, it, this is a much bigger thing. What you've focused on is, first of all, the the section of Ukrainians which were involved in the events in proximate in that area were Nazis. They were part of the Hitler operation in their lifetime. And these are children of the Nazis. The, we have to remember that the uh, there was a certain section of working for Hitler, which were part of the Hitler system. They killed a lot of Ukrainians themselves, but they also killed a lot of Poles. The uh, assassinations of Poles under Hitler were done largely by these particular Ukrainians who were part of a Nazi system. If you look at their costumes that they wear at home, the costumes of those Nazi insignia, 
Their origin is Nazi. And so what you have is you have the United States government now is actually supporting these Nazis. And Newland is one of the key supporters of these Nazis. They are still Nazis. Their record of killing Poles during World War II is enormous. This is the same people, they wear the same costumes, the same insignia, the same le legacy. And by the way, you were in World War II. I, I should also add that. It's, it's amazing how, how long you've been speaking out. It's just amazing. Uh, and I know that is a part of the right-wing group being funded by the CIA. You are correct, sir. Uh, and they're trying to split between Catholic and then, of course, Orthodox. It's more pro-Russia. But what's the big geopolitical and uh, why is this such a serious situation? Because it has nothing to do with Syria as such or things like that. These are byproducts of a much larger scheme of things. What we're on the verge of is World War III, thermonuclear World War III. And that's the big problem we have to try to defeat. Now, there are other problems that come in as subsidiary features of this problem. But as, as far as I'm concerned, as long as Obama remains president, we're in danger of being involved in a matter of, you know, a few weeks or day, even days of thermonuclear war globally. That's where we are. And, uh, you know, my, my interest here on this is partly just inside the United States itself. This presidency is destroying our nation. And it's getting us into a thermonuclear war, which we want no part of, and which our real military people want no part of either. There's no reason for a thermonuclear war. As a matter of fact, it will actually cause the extinction of the human species or something like that. And, and, and by the way, a lot of mainline analysts, as you know, are saying this could trigger a nuclear war with the Russians. Explain that to people. Then what is... Well, what you, what you have is when the United States fell under the influence of certain presidents, such as George W. Bush Jr. and Obama, we were dealt, we were dealt the dirtiest hand ever occurred. And this has something to do with the way the reasons why Bill Clinton was framed up, and it was a frame up, but that's a whole story in itself. But when he left office, we lost Glass Steagall Law, and that was the first thing that was done. And the less of Glass Steagall has destroyed the U.S. economy ever since. It's been getting worse and worse and worse. Now, our, our objective should be to get our Glass Steagall Law and not have our house being run by the British Empire through the Wall Street. And the Wall Street gangsters are the real inside problem here. And Obama's nothing, he's not, he's a stooge. He's not really the president, he's a president in name, but he's a stooge for these, in, these international interests. Well, yes, sir, I understand that. When I brought up Syria, I mean, it's part of the Brzezinski type uh, great game continued proxy war to take every country that Russia has a port in, to get up against Russia's borders, to, to fund radical Islam along Russia's borders. I mean, from what I've seen, the West is trying to foment a takeover in Ukraine to get them to join an anti-Russian coalition. And are you saying that's what could lead then to weapons being moved into Ukraine and then uh, escalating crises with Russia? No, it's, it, the, the Russia thing is really, in a sense, minor on this business. We, we, the world has been divided in terms of power between two regions of the planet. One is the transatlantic region of the power, which goes into Europe. Then you've got the area from Belarus on toward uh, Asia, and apart from some terrorist areas uh, in, in the Eurasian region, yeah, that's, that's the Iraq climate. And so therefore you have the British Empire, and Obama's nothing but a stooge for the British Empire. And Wall Street is the key element here. Wall Street is essentially a British intelligence operation. It's a financial one. And it's the one that's ruined the United States. So what happens is the thing has come to the point that Wall Street and Britain are about to go bankrupt. That is the use of a bailout as a policy, which was done under, actually started with young Bush and continued with Obama. But bailout has ruined the U.S. economy hopelessly. Now, we could cancel bailout, but that would require a decision to do that. But the point is, what's coming now is bail-in, which is the next stage of bailout. Bail-in would cause, in and of, of itself, a total immediate collapse of the U.S. economy. And for those that don't know, they've already done it in Cyprus and other areas. 
They're saying they're going to take money out of our bank accounts to prop up the zombie bank, something he warned of a decade ago or more. So what I'm saying, again, to Lyndon LaRouge, World War II vet, you name it, uh, just amazing to have him here with us. There's so few World, World War II vets left, much less one so eloquent. Lyndon, what I'm trying to get at here with you is I understand it's a bigger global issue. But as the world depression accelerates, you're going to have these uprisings. Then the Anglo-American British Empire is going to try to use those to foment even more breakdown. Uh, so, so what I'm saying is geopolitically, why are you saying it's a danger of thermal nuclear war? Because it is. I'll give, explain it to you. The, what you have is you have a division of the world now into two parts. The Anglo-American system, the transatlantic system, the Northern Hemisphere in particular, and that is bankrupt. The United States under its present system is totally, hopelessly bankrupt. And what the bankruptcy has been the buildup of this bailout system, especially from 2008. From that point on was the real point where they became it, under young Bush, normally young Bush. And it got worse. Under Obama, it's become much worse. Now, what's happened is the British Empire and the British are an empire. They're not just Britain. They control practically all of Africa. They control under the Euro system. They control most of Western Europe. And that, that's the kind of situation. So you have a situation where the world system is divided into two sectors. One in the Northern Hemisphere is the transatlantic region. And the United States is now a puppet of the British Empire under the current president. If we could get back to a real president, to young Bush and Obama, we could probably get our nation back. But the point is the, the investment, the investment system of the British Empire, including Wall Street itself, is such that they are about to go bankrupt immediately. They're on the verge of it. Now, what their option is, is knowing that the bail-in is coming on. And they do know that bail-in means a general collapse of the U.S. economy. I mean a monetary collapse, not a breakdown, not a depression, a collapse. So what their object is to say, well, look, the Eurasian sector of the world, that is the wealthier part, Russia, China, India, and so forth, these parts are growing, whereas the United States has been declining economically, in physical economic terms, since essentially... Uh, the time that Jack Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, was, was ousted from office, assassinated. Since that time, in the start of the Indochina War, we have actually, as MacArthur warned about this thing, we have actually been in a process of decline. There has been never any economic recovery in reality in the United States. There are some people who become rich, but you'll find that the employment levels the quality of life offered to people. Now, and look, for example, let's, let's take one very good example of this, fracking. Now, I'm sure you're coming from Texas, you know all about fracking. And we know that the fracking, which is a British operation, is, is now destroying the western part of the United States. It is actually taking, uh, using water, driving it down in order to bring up gas. And the gas they're bringing up is actually, is actually destroying the entire region west of the Mississippi. We have the two, the two leading states of the United States, Texas and California, are going into destruction. Now, there's another little complication in this, which, and there always are complications. In this case, the problem is that the sun, our solar system, has gone through what's called a quiet period. That means that the radiation being supplied to move Earth is less than it was before. And under these conditions, we have the greatest drought in the western part of the United States in probably 500 years. The state of Texas is dying. It, the industries are being shut down. The same thing is true in California and the other states between. But you take California and Texas, if you knock them out of the U.S. economy, you're going to have a total collapse of the U.S. economy. So therefore, we have a great crisis. Is caused by the policies which have gone through by under certain presidents, particularly since Bill Clinton was taken out of office. The rate of collapse has reached such a point, and the hyperinflation under the bailout system has reached such a point that it's now about to blow up. And bail-in 
will be the trigger which causes an instant collapse. Now, what's the solution then from the standpoint of London and people like that? The point is that while the Western part of the world, the transatlantic region, has been collapsing in physical economy for all this period, ever since Jack Kennedy was, out, was assassinated, at the same time, gradually, in recent times, the Eurasian part, like Russia, uh, you know, China, uh, India, so forth, are coming up. So therefore, the plan is to try to crack the balance of forces between the transatlantic region and the Eurasian system. Now, what that means is if they could get into this one area, which is in the southern part of the Ukraine, and if they could knock that out, then by using U.S. forces based in that area, they could think they could knock out the Ukraine area, and that knocking out Russia by an outflanking operation. Now, what this is, this puts us on the edge of a thermonuclear war. The war is between two forces now, the transatlantic region and the Eurasian region. The Eurasian region includes nations like China, 1.4 billion people, and a powerful nation. India, 1.2 or so billion people, and so forth. And Russia is not insignificant. So when you take these forces together and you say that the British Empire, which thinks it's controlling the entire planet, which is stealing our, our oil, stealing our food in the United States and doing all these things to us, that this, this process means that the only way that the transatlantic region, that is the British Empire in particular, could survive is by gobbling up and destroying and conquering Eurasia. Now, when you talk about, think about what the military forces are in China, thermonuclear forces, in India, in Russia, you think about the, mili- the, trans- the similar kinds of forces in the Europe and in the United States. We have the greatest assembly of thermonuclear death ever conceived on this planet. And what's coming to a point is the entire planet is going into this war. My concern is to stop that war. And what what these Nazis are doing, these Ukrainian Nazis are doing, is simply the the intended detonator of a global thermonuclear war. Now, we have people in the United States, including our military, who are against it. My point is, if Obama, President Obama, was thrown out of office now, as he should be, for reason, and I think there are about 20 counts against Obama for violation of the Constitution. He's hyper, you know, he can be thrown out of office immediately. He's, hi- he, he's hyper weak, but the Republican leadership won't do it. Let me ask you this question, because you have a lot of sources. And again, if you're a new listener, the media, the controlled state media will go, oh, Lenin LaRouge, ha, 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 for 20 years. I did research on LaRouge and would read their publication 20 years ago. But I've read the Washington Post articles, and I'm not kissing up to him. I'm just telling folks he's a very interesting guy. Going back to World War II, uh, doing all sorts of interesting stuff there uh, in the medical corps, from what I read, and connections into OSS, and then suddenly pops up and is giving weekly briefings at the CIA to the director and to presidents, and and then the Bushes get jealous of him and have him thrown in jail over a you know made up crooked toenail. Uh, my issue is, is he's not a guy that will little brag about himself. He really is interesting, no matter what you think about Lyndon LaRouge. And so much of what he says is just so piercing and thought provoking. I know you have huge connections uh, out there. So what I'm saying is, I, I was told by a high level c- commander that they they dug up hidden nukes at Dias Air Force Base three months ago, disappeared them. Then suddenly they fired all these nuke commanders. Lindsey Graham said, "Get ready for where the nukes have been sent to be blown up." I mean, I know this is real. My source doesn't know, you know why they were digging him up, where they were going. They weren't supposed to be there. That they're, they're purging the entire military leadership uh, in, the, in the nuclear department. Do you have any intel, Lyndon LaRouche, about what that's about? Exactly. It's that. It's, that. it's the people who will go along with the British line. Now, I don't think the Joint Chiefs in general will go along with the British line. But as long as Obama is the president of the United States, despite the fact that he has about 20 counts for his immediate impeachment, and this is not just an impeachment to be thrown out of office. 
This is the people would be thrown in jail. No, I know, but do you have any? Uh, obviously, if anybody had will, he could be put in prison. But the establishment wants him there to become a dictator to set the precedent of a of an executive dictator who you vote in, who then acts as a dictator uh, outside of their uh, con constitutional purview. But what I'm asking you, uh, Lynn LaRouge, is this: what, Do you know anything about the missing nuclear weapons? I, I know that the, the the what's happened is we're under. Uh, in our government, and you have this Snowden affair, which exposes it, we're under the greatest degree of fraud and fake secrecy about what we're going on in our own government ever before. And this has been specifically the Obama administration. My argument is this. If you want to get understand what we what the problem is, you have to look at what we have to do to solve the problem. And the problem is, for me, I I can say because there's a rage building up in the Congress, members of Congress. They want this bum out of office now. And we have about 20 particular occasions for throwing him out of office summarily. And not only throwing him out of office, but throwing him into prison. Yeah, why won't they? It's open and shut. It's, you know, it's, not, that, it's not that closed. The, re, see, the surge of revolt against this process is in process. We have not won the war. But we're fighting it. We are fighting to save the United States and to prevent a thermonuclear war. Now, if you know what a thermonuclear war is, because this is not a nuclear war, this is a thermonuclear war with modern weapons and modern capabilities. That the minute that war goes to place, and both sides of the power, the transatlantic fight and the Eurasian side, they have the greatest concentration of thermonuclear power you ever saw, you ever imagined. And if they go to war, they're going to go to full. And there probably will be no long-term survivors of an hour and a half of a thermonuclear war. That's where we are. My concern is get this bum out of office, the president out of office now. Because, because that would then derail the whole thing. Explain to that. Uh, well, Lennon Rouge is our it, guest. It, 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 you look. The, the responsible forces in the United States. Well, stay there, sir. We got to go to break. We're going to come right back with you and explain it to us on the other side. And, and but but the, the the system of the Norman and William the Conqueror and that system that became the modern empire and the imperium and puppet governments and councils on foreign relations and Royal Institute of International Affairs. These these corporate governances that control government that the British Empire created. Definitely the ghost of the British Empire possesses and runs the Anglo-American North Atlantic Treaty conglomerate that ties into the EU. That is the dominant force in the world. And then you've got the Chinese that are somewhat double dealing with it. The Russians are isolated, being attacked. you got to root for the underdog because they're not doing anything to anybody. And I'm not romanticizing it either. It's just they're not doing anything to us. Criminal elements that are trying to impoverish us as political control under eugenics-based systems, Agenda 21, what I call neo-feudalistic serfdom, are trying to do the same thing to us they've done to the Russians before. And so I'm for team humanity and really building a future, a renaissance. And I know Lyndon LaRouge is for that as well. That's why he's been so roundly demonized for decades. And... What I want you to give us here is solutions, but first I want to bring this up because this is a clip from six, seven years ago on C-SPAN. I happened to be watching C-SPAN in the coffee room back there and caught this on tape. Uh, and it's coming up in the upcoming Obama film. We're actually getting into this British issue because most of our leadership, Democrat and Republican, become knighted later and even get properties and, and money and all these other things. And it's a big deal. And this is what elites relish more than anything is not just becoming a knight, but a knight commander of the Order of Bath, which is a, you know, he can walk right into MI6 and give orders if he wants to. They act like the queen doesn't run anything, folks. She runs that whole country. She tells the prime minister what to do. She shuts down roads in England every day randomly to exercise her power. They're above the law when they're not hanging around with Jimmy Savelle. So I want to play this clip and get him to encapsulate what the British monarchy is, because it's bigger than the monarchy. Because then they double back, there's this war against sovereignty. People go, well, I'm for the monarchy, and then it gives us sovereignty. You know, that's British. Well, they're not even British. But I want to play this clipping at Lyndon LaRouge's take on it. Uh, here is Colin Powell walking into a reception uh, to go into a dinner 
uh, with the Queen of England in D.C. Here it is. Knight Commander of the Order of the Bath. Knight Commander of the Order of the Bath. Very honored. Her Majesty gave it to uh, Alman to me about 12 years ago. Knight Commander. Knight Commander. Okay. Listen carefully. Knight Commander of the Order of the Bath. <laughs> and the other one. Same thing. Same thing. There was only one thing uh, bigger than Hollywood in the 20s and 30s, and that was the British Hollywood. And if you watch all those old movies, it's all British propaganda. Uh, and we were taught to hate the French, love the British. I mean, so you can see the programming. Pratt Street, Council on Foreign Relations, 1922, set up to take over our government, British intelligence. This is a fact. Now, I don't see what's left of the British, the British people. We're not talking about them. That's been sucked dry by this. We're talking about... The, 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 the Norman class, if you want to go back to where this came from, still ruling much of the world today, tied into the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, and others. Is that an improper analysis from you, the grand expert on this, Lennon LaRouche? It's actually older. It goes back to Venetian the history of Zeus and Prometheus, which was famous in the Greek history, and it actually is the model in terms of everything in transatlantic culture, for example, in terms of history. Break it down for us, please. What? Yeah. So this, uh, I mean, we're, what we're involved in is we're involved with two systems. One system is against the Roman Empire in particular, and the British Empire, which is formed about the same time that the British declared war on their former colonies, are the same thing. This is this is, is an old standing thing. This is what is called an imperial empire. It's not a national thing. Their nation, national uh, uh, interests and so forth are part of the game, that play, play the whole game. But the issue is, it's the same thing is what Columbus affected through the influence of Nicholas of Cusa on him, that, in, that we sent people across the oceans to colonize in, in the area across the Atlantic Ocean. In the hope, because Nicholas of Cusa, who was this great priest who gave this, created this policy, to cross the oceans because Europe was a mess. And what happened is the, this, this happened, Columbus's discovery was part of this process. And what became the United States was an expression of recognizing the terrible conditions of Europe. Now, for a great period of time, we find that since the United States was established and was being established, we had much support for the United States and its cause from Europe. But what has happened is the Roman Empire, now, which is now brought up as the British Empire, because that, that occurred at the same time that we got into our war with, with uh, what became the United States. Because the British Empire had taken over and was determined to become a world empire. So other nations supported us in our revolution to create our United States on that basis. But since that time, the British Empire has again and again tried to control us. They've controlled us from inside, the, for example, New York City is a center of this pollution of the British taking over Manhattan through the international British-controlled banking. Wall Street is a product of that. Wall Street is actually a British agency. It is not an American agency. And my determination is to get back to a Glass-Steagall system and bankrupt these characters, and we could do it if the will were there. We are now going bankrupt. We have the state of Texas is dying. The state of California is dying. It will go on for years to come unless we do something about it. And I say we have to do something about it. And the question is, can we in the United States, by getting Obama thrown out of power, and he is 70% of the American people want Obama eliminated from power, I'm one of the first. Get this guy out of there. If we do that, we can take measures to save our country. And if, we, if the United States is not included, does not choose to put it, itself involved in a war, with, with the British interests against the uh, Eurasian interests, if we, don't, this, if we don't go into such a war, there will be no such war. And what I'm concerned about, pull Obama out of office right now. You've got about probably 70% of the voters want him out of there. 
Let's get him out of there. Sure, sure. Quantify uh, why it's important to get him out, what signal it sends, how you believe it will derail this whole out-of-control downhill avalanche that's happening. Exactly. We can do it. And that's what I'm working on. And I find that there are an increasing number of people who have been know me for a long period of time. And, you know, they used to duck me because they say, you're right, but don't tell anybody I told you so. And, I, and these are from leading people circles. And I do work with leading circles internationally and in, in the United States. I do that. And I have a special role to play because of my forecasting capability. And by the way, I'm not getting you to talk about yourself, but it, but it's really unknown out there other than a few Washington Post, Washington Time articles and things from the 80s when Ronald Reagan was reading your stuff and when uh, you were visiting the CIA every week, landing in, in your own helicopter. Everybody was real jealous, the Washington Post said. And and then, of course, it said your connections back to the OSS when you did World War II. That's all shadowy. Talk about yourself a little bit because you are a very interesting person, Lennon. Tell us how you got into these international circles and why multiple CIA directors, we can pull them up if folks want to, I forget the main one, said you, quote, had the best private intelligence network in the world. I mean, that's pretty interesting. And, and then meanwhile, most people just hear, Lennon LaRouge, I heard he's crazy because CNBC said so or MSNBC said so. <laughs> I wouldn't pay any attention to foolish people. Like that. No, 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 I know. But I mean, I know you don't like to talk about yourself, but you know, you're 90 years old now. You've had this great life. I mean, tell us, how did you get into these power circles? And, and I mean, really, who are you? No, I just happened to be, I didn't like the education system I was exposed to in schools. So I thought it was stupid and I was right. And therefore, I became successful and unpopular at the same time <laughs> because I, you know, I never would, I would never submit. I ne don't believe that we have teachers who are supposed to tell us what to think. We're supposed to have teachers to guide us into making discoveries of our own and you know, testing those discoveries and that sort of process. So, I mean, for, for a long time, I, you know, I hated Euclidean geometry. I despised it. I was right. Absolutely correct. It's stupid. You still have people who believe in that nonsense. But so, therefore, I had developed these scientific capabilities, and I became a consultant in the 1950s. I was a, a very important consultant at one point. And then I got in a fight with the, F the FBI, and the FBI was not pleased that I would not obey them. And so I had some periods of troubles then, but I was still doing what I was doing. And then I had a forecast in 1958 that I made and said, that, you know, or 58, 68, rather. And I said, well, even through about two or three years, this whole thing is blowing up. Your whole Wall Street system is going to blow up. And uh, came along the 70, you know, 1971 and the summer of 71 and blew the whole thing blew up. So there was a big discussion then about that, and I was invited to debate all these characters from Wall Street and in their offices in a meeting we had at this, this, you know, December 2nd of that year. And I was right, and I've always been right on this. And what's happened is I've always really believed it against the British and Wall Street crowd. Their conception of economy has destroyed the United States, and I've been against it. And uh, they bounce me down, but I still, still myself, and I do the same thing I do. I don't change because they bounce me down a couple of times. They got tired of me. They were threatened when I was, you know, Reagan and so forth. Ronald Reagan cleared the way that I should lead the SDI program. And that involved international forces, leading forces in Italy, France. That's right, because it's on record that you're one of the original people to call for it, but as a way to have international force to actually stop asteroids. And Reagan liked that idea because that would help sell it, I guess. No, no, he was actually, Reagan was actually two things. He was the president, and a lot of our presidents have an opportunity side to them, as I think you know. Uh, some of them are, are good otherwise, and Reagan was one of those cases. He was not the greatest genius among our presidents, but he was a, he was a very serious figure. He was close to uh, the Franklin Roosevelt circles in his time. He was an aide an officer, a flying officer, so to speak, in that period, during that wartime period. And well, all, by, by, by basis, in terms of social basis, was largely, from my experience, with World War II. I was no significance in that period as such. But I was associated with the OSS, for example, or by later at a later time. I was, didn't know them as OSS men, but people they came to me in a later point of life and came all, all veterans of the OSS, uh, surviving veterans, 
and they became a, a key part of the Reagan administration. And therefore, I was the one who mustered this international campaign for a strategic defense initiative. And I'm still in the same same kind of commitment with a little change in technology. I'm now worried about how we're going to deal with the moon. I want to get some thermonuclear power here in this, this planet of ours at a new level, which uh, we, discoveries on the moon show that we can do. And I want to get a, a program of economic development, which I think will be sufficient, given even a few, a handful, relative handful of scientists, but you've got a, good, a handful of very good scientists working together on thermonuclear fusion, enhanced by, by, by helium-3. You do that, you can take a, a handful of scientists in various nations, and you can build the greatest power of, of progress for mankind that ever was imagined. And that's what I'm committed to. Progress, absolutely real progress, not the eugenicist deindustrialization progress. Well, people need to call Congress, it's starting to happen, and say impeach Obama, uh, throw him out of office, uh, arrest him, uh, go after Holder, because uh, they're starting to persecute the press, sir, as you know. They, they've arrested Dinesh D'Souza. They're arresting governors for no reason. Uh, they're threatening people. I'm being threatened. I don't want to give it any attention, but folks need to pray for us. Uh, you know what it's like when they start threatening you. Uh, but that shows we're getting to them, right? We, we, we are, I would say, you know, look, we got 70% of the population of the United States wants this bump out now. I think it's 77, yeah. Yeah, that's what it's, but, they, but then you have people, members of Congress, not a majority, but I think you could probably get, in a fair term, about 20% of the members of the Congress, I think, would be willing right now to say, throw the bum out. As a matter of fact, some members of the Congress are almost hysterical. Get this nut out of there. It is crazy. I've, I've never seen. I've never seen power grabbing uh, like it. What do you know from your sources about Obama, the man? Is he a total puppet? Or what's going on with him? Oh, he is a. He is a. He would have been nothing except for a woman called Valerie Jarrett. Now, Valerie Jarrett had been was an American by by law, but she was really a British agent, and she was assigned to go back into the United States. And uh, through uh, some corrupt people at Harvard and things like that, this monkey, or virtual monkey, uh, became uh, a political figure. He was nothing. He would never have become anything except for Valerie Jarrett. He is, he is not really a president in a functional sense. I mean, he runs around with his jock strap between the, you know, the two parts of the, of the White House, <laughs> one part of the family part, the other part the public part. And he was playing with basketballs up in this little room which separates these two parts of the White House. And so he was not really much of a heavyweight. His idea, his mental capabilities and ideas are virtually zilch, or less than zero in some respects, I think is probably better. So he's, he's only an instrument. And what happened is the British, the British system got him elected president by the biggest drug deal ever run. And you remember that when he was running against Hillary Clinton and came down to Texas, and they were running pretty much neck by neck. And the drug flow from Texas, the drug money to Texas for coming out of London was the thing that won him his presidency. And Wall Street was fully behind it. I know you've written books and everything about the British Empire running most of the drugs, and boy, is that certainly, certainly true. Their big banks openly launder the majority of the money. They get caught. They don't get in trouble. All right. Well, uh, Lyndon LaRouche, thank you so much for all of the time. We'll put your websites up on screen, and uh, you and uh, any of your other crew you'd like to recommend. I'd like to get some of the doctors you've got on staff, I know, to come on, and some of your researchers talk about Obamacare and what it would do. You were right about that, saying it was death care. Uh, and I, I, I really appreciate you spending time with us. Hopefully we, uh, we can stop World War III. <laughs> right, exactly. Thank you very much. Wow, very interesting guy to have him on. I'm going to come back, callers. I'm going to get to calls the next two segments. Then we've got another guest coming on. i got a bunch of breaking news. Stay with us. And he saw heavy combat operations and just was all over. They were sending him all over the place. Uh, I mean, that, that's, most of those guys are dead now, or they can't talk. You know, they're so old. He's like 91 years old, I think now. And he knows what he's talking about. It's, it's just amazing.
found it really interesting. Doesn't mean I agree with everything he stands for. Some call him a leftist, some call him ultra right wing, whatever. I just get him on because he's so demonized. And it, it just shows that they, oh, don't listen to that guy. He's, he's bad. He's racist. Don't watch Alex Jones, MSNBC says. He's deeply racist. They just play these mind games to keep us divided. While the world does hurdle towards greater crises. We're going to go to uh, Habu and then quickly to Julio and then uh, Raptor Man. He's been holding forever, actually, right after Habu. Look. I skipped a break earlier, which cost the network and myself money. I haven't plugged anything all day. I'm so obsessed with the news. We're almost two hours in. If you believe in this broadcast and want to find incredibly high-quality products, they are the best we can find, InfoWarsStore.com, whether it's books, videos, pro-liberty T-shirts, hats, you name it. We've got the new Made in America, Molon Lambe, Spartan with crossed uh, M4s uh, T-shirt bestseller. We've got the Bottle Breacher 50 caliber bullet. Uh, we've just got so much at InfoWarsStore.com, MadeIn1776.com, takes you right to the area with the Made in America shirts and stuff. And we've also got InfoWarsLife.com with the proprietary supplements that we're so proud of that helps fund the operation. Um, please support us. Please uh, shop with us. Shop with the good guys. want to thank all of you that do shop with us. Thank you so much. Uh, let's go to Habu in Wisconsin. Uh, go ahead. Thanks for holding. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jones. Um, always good to listen to you. Uh, I'll be very quick and, and brief and bullet type uh, uh, points. You know, your analysis and that of your uh, esteemed uh, guest is spot on, absolutely correct. Um, uh, secondly, I'm not an uh, uh, I'm agnostic on this matter of the Ukraine, and I have uh, I, 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 I'm not tied to one side or the other. But after listening to um, State uh, um, Department uh, official Newland saying that she had the uh, U.S. had spent five billion dollars, and uh, that going to a poor country sh that should have been able to buy um, thousands, if not some million uh, people. So that shows, I think, uh, why there is such a polarized kind of um, situation with only a certain group of protesters. And as you say, uh, observed correctly, that uh, the, the police have been remarkably uh, um, uh, restrained, which would not happen in uh, um, you know, other parts of the world. And lastly, may I offer this prediction, and I'm not trying to be alarmist, I, I believe that um, President Putin is just biding his time uh, to wait for the Sochi Olympics to end. And after that, if this level of violence continues, he's going to uh, take matters in his hands um, and, and just because that is, I believe, Russia's interest. So That's, that's another great I'm point. Saying. They noticed they, they pulled this whole Soros thing off during the Olympics, just like they attacked at the last Olympics in China. Remember that in, in 2008? Uh, they, they launched an attack on Russia during the Olympics when they knew Putin was there. This is, this is unbelievable. And uh, you know, that's a good point. How do you think the Russians are going to respond, though? Well, I think it's being restrained. And, you know, this, of course, will be fodder for, I believe, the West, meaning they'll say, oh, yeah, this guy is a real, uh, you know, anti-Democrat, this, that, the other, uh, Putin, to demonize Putin even more. I, I don't, just like the Georgia case, the West will not be able to do anything. After all, you know, all the gas goes through um, through Ukraine, and if it doesn't, there's another pipeline around it, and it's Ukraine who benefits more from the passage of gas, getting the tariffs, etc., uh, and getting Russian gas, too. Well so said, Habu, you're amazing. You know what's sad? You hear folks that are obviously not from the U.S., and they know all about geopolitics and everything works, and you talk to my average American, they don't even know what planet we're on. I mean, our listeners are smart and informed, but, I mean, it's fun to know how the world works. It's all the little pieces and it's all the little... I love talking to people like Habu. We'll be right back. Stay with me. All right, let's jam in as many calls as we can right now. Uh, Judy, I'm sorry. I told you to hold over so you can finish your point. And uh, that guest went by. I appreciate you doing that. What was your other point you were going to make, Judy, in uh, Florida? perfectly okay. Um, well, I was talking about uh, men in the United States. Uh, I, I really think they need to be handled just a little bit with kid gloves because I think they're afraid for themselves and their families. And I just wanted to say, regarding what Mr. LaRouche was saying, I, I think one of the most important things for us to realize right now is that we're human beings, but we're forgetting that. Um, I really think because of the entertainment, the drugs, what's being fed to us, what we're drinking, what's flying at us in the air, um, all of these things are cumulative. But I do think men are, are, are fully aware 
of what's going to be happening to them and their families. And I think they're, they're gravely concerned, but don't know what to really do about it at this point. But they're, they, I think there are people listening to you, alternative media, and I think there is a push. And the other thing I'd like to say, because I think it's very significant, is that I sent Do um, a, a couple weeks ago uh, this article about the – there's a count of the, Const- of the Constitutional Convention. There's 35 states that have signed up for it. And it all, there's 38 that are needed in order to have a, a convention where basically the people say, okay, Congress, you're not going to be doing your job. We have something to say about it, and we're going to initiate change. So I just wanted to bring that up because it, it's very real. So I hear you. I hear you. Very well said. God bless you. Uh, let's talk to Julio in Illinois. Julio, thanks for holding. You're on the Ukraine. Go ahead. You know, Alex, when I covered I covered the NATO trial, NATO three trial, and they were talking about Molotov cocktails that these three patsies were supp- alleged to use. And the Cook County state's attorneys would have salivated; they would have loved to watch the footage coming out of Kiev, Ukraine, with these neo-Nazi protesters. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. These is what these are some of the protesters in Ukraine. They would have salivated over that footage of them literally making Molotov cocktails and throwing them at the police. Well, you hit the nail on the coffin just a few moments ago when you said, unfortunately, that here in the States, we are pretty much ignorant to what's going on throughout the world geopolitically. We, uh, most of the country is unaware of anything, really, that's going on across the world. Now, you also mentioned about the breadbasket of Europe, Eastern Europe, which is Ukraine. Not only is George Soros funding these protests, but the multinationals like Monsanto, who's also funding the protests in Thailand as well. Thailand, a big rice uh, home of Asia. Ukraine uh, with, with the bread bread market. It, 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 it's, it's amazing. Also, you have John McCain, Senator John McCain, such a freedom lover he is, our beloved senator. A, about a month ago, he was speaking at the Brookings Institute. And as a journalist, I get so frustrated seeing these events on C-SPAN, wishing I was there. John McCain, a month ago, literally called Alex for a technocracy in Ukraine. Now, we all know how, the, how a technocracy has worked in uh, EU nations like Italy. They're already going through anti-EU protests as we speak. You're not going to see that on Western corporate media. But John McCain literally calling for a technocracy in Ukraine while you're seeing on corporate media, oh, these freedom fighters in Kiev, they, you know, they want to be in the EU. They want more Western uh, influence. You know, well, I'd forgotten he said that just a little while ago. And for those that don't know, when you hear a technocracy – when they appoint the Italian president or the uh, president of Spain or the, um, not the president of Spain, the president of Greece, it means banker dictatorship out in the open, technocracy, like a robot on the side of the, your house that price gouges you and spies on all your communications, smart meter, brain cancer is now called happy time. It, 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 it's a spin term. You're absolutely right. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Is the op- one of the op- opposition leaders in Ukraine is Vitaly Klitschko, one of the brothers of the famous Klitschko boxing brothers. This guy doesn't know anything about politics. He is ultimately going to be used as the puppet while the technocracy invades Kiev. But I like boxing. Yeah, more celebrities, more celebrities in government. Constitutionalist, libertarian, conservative, proto-Tea Party publication uh, out there. Other than maybe you could say Newsmax, but that was main more line, uh, more mainline Republican uh, and, and really a trailblazer. He joins us just for the next 25 minutes or so because I wanted to get him on about the persecution of Dinesh D'Souza, the persecution of governors over things that clearly I don't think are illegal compared to what Obama's doing. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's clearly political persecution by this undoubtedly uh, corrupt Justice Department headed up by... Eric Holder. But then we learned that Google told WorldNet Daily that they're not going to let them run their ads anymore uh, because they have articles about, quote, black mobs. It's happening here in Austin. Large groups of young black youth beating up white people. Uh, it is racial attacks. I mean, if it was a group of white people, it'd be a white mob. So uh, we're seeing the censorship really intensify. I remember. Uh, Joseph Farah said uh, b right before the last election, he said, look, I didn't endorse McCain or Obama last time. I, I wrote the book, none of the above. I was wrong. 
uh, because Obama is so bad. He's not a regular Democrat. They're going for it all. And, quote, we're going to be in jail or they're going to try to put us in jail. We may have to leave the country. He said all this on air. So I wanted to repeat it all in his words. And I'm like, man, it's really that bad, Joseph? And he's like, yeah. Off air, he goes, I'm serious. That's the word. And now you got Matt Drudge tweeting that he's preparing an emergency exit plan, basically, and that you should, too. Most of the big elites have already left the U.S. People that have been part of this takeover have been leaving. This is, this is serious business. You've got mainstream news now saying returning veterans are the main enemy, and they've got mock cities to fight the Tea Party. This is happening. Uh, Joseph, let's, let's talk about the political persecution. All right, but, but will you indulge me before we get into that to just say one thing that I know you're too modest to allow me to say, just, but just give me two minutes to say you bet. that you guys at InfoWars and you, Alex, are really doing an extraordinary public service. I, I have to tell you, you know, first of all, WND has been around for 17 years, before Newsmax, by the way. Uh, but the, and, and during most of those years, we honestly, we, we joke about it at WND, you know, that we were sitting on stories for days, sometimes weeks, uh, big stories. But we knew that nobody else was going to do those stories, so we'd be relaxed about it. Well, you know, in recent years, we have noticed that we've gotten scooped by InfoWars so many times on stories that I think are really important. And specifically, I want to commend you for sticking on this, you know, the ammunition buys by the federal government. I mean, this is how... It, you know, this is how we find out about these things, because InfoWars uh, is on the case. And uh, and recently, the thing about the, uh, what it, the driver's license registration database that they're starting, InfoWars is kicking butt, and I want to hand it to you. And I feel like, you know, for the first time, we've got, it, it sharpens us at WND, because we can't sit around on our hands anymore taking for granted that we're going to have these stories exclusively. And that's a good thing. Competition is a you know friendly, healthy competition. That's what you guys are providing. And I think it's made us better for it. So just, just wanted to say put that out there. Now, with regard to the topic at hand, you're right. I remember saying those words, and you, you bring out the best in me, Alex. Sometimes, uh, you know, I need somebody to, to poke me a little bit on the air to say what I'm really thinking, and you're good at that. Uh, but, yeah, what we're seeing today with the, you know, persecution of Dinesh D'Souza, and let's talk about Ben Carson, and, uh, you know, we can get into the Google thing. But, you know, Dinesh D'Souza is a great example, because here's a guy who you know, was one of the highest profile Obama critics in during the 2012 presidential election year, makes a, a film that, you know, second highest grossing documentary ever, all about Obama. And, you know, we turn around and in the early 2014, here this guy is getting indicted. This guy is a, a scholar, you know, gifted, smart guy, written a gazillion books, and he made this movie. And now let's just say for a moment, he's 100% guilty of the campaign finance charges that he's, he's facing. Let's say he's 100% guilty. You're the president of the United States. You're the attorney general. Do you go and indict this guy on this penny ante charge, knowing what that looks like to the whole nation? It looks like retribution. It looks like payback. And I got to tell you, you know, if you want to get somebody who's involved in politics and who makes political donations, the way the campaign finance laws are written in this country, it's easy to do. You can get anybody who's involved, and every campaign breaks the law or skirts the law because nobody can read all the laws. You know? And then I mean, you've got this famously corrupt Justice Department with Fast and Furious, Benghazi, Solyndra, now sitting in judgment and, and, and persecuting People, I mean, it's it's clearly persecution, and it's very creepy. That's right. Now, but you know, a normal president, a normal, a normally corrupt president, you know, would look at that and say, you know what, back off on this. This is going to look bad. To the, it's going to look like we're going after our political enemies. They have no self, you know. They have. They're not. They they don't look at that at all. They're 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 just completely oblivious to that. They don't care. In fact, I believe they're sending a message by indicting Dinesh D'Souza to guys like you and me and Drudge and you know the the other new media.
folks out there who are getting to them, and they want us to be looking over our shoulder all the time. Ben Carson, the guy gives a speech at the National Prayer Breakfast with Obama there. He turns around a couple months later. The, the IRS is giving him a, you know, a proctological exam, and it's still going on. And, uh, you know, thank goodness he's a man of courage. He's not backing down. He's exposing it. A lot of guys don't want to talk about those things when it's happening to them because they don't want to become pariahs. And here's another thing about this, Alex. When D'Souza got indicted, I personally went and called lots of people I know, people whose names you would all, everyone would recognize. And I said, how come you're not speaking out on this? Because, you know, this is a big deal, what we're seeing happen right now. And you know that a lot of these guys, a lot of people, who, they're friends of mine, I don't want to name them, I don't want to embarrass them, a lot of people were afraid to speak out. You know, I don't know the facts, I don't know the details. But come on, details. This is payback, it's political payback, it's so obvious. And a lot of them still have not spoken out. And that's a test by the authoritarians. Can they start setting people up? Can they start going after folks? And these people that do this, that are cowards, so I know you spoke up, Drudge spoke up, I spoke up, many others did, many didn't. It shows they have no instinct. Clearly, he just gave a little extra money, and his friends did, uh, to somebody who he went to college with, and it was in a hard race uh, against the Democrats, and they lost it. And it was out in the open. And bundling's done by everybody. It's kind of like Ken Lay. What he did wasn't illegal, and that was later found to be. I, I've looked at the law. Uh, you know, at best, it's a crooked toenail. That's why they're trying to get him on giving false statements to the FBI because he might have said something a little different one time, a little different the next time. That's why you can't talk to him because they always get you for claiming you said something wrong. So the answer is, I'm not talking to you. And the fact that people wouldn't have the instinct. To defend the press, imagine if if Bush and his Justice Department, we know Michael Moore. In fact, somebody should do a story on this and look at his donation records. I know he gives big money to the Democrats. We ought to find somebody. He's given more than $3,000 or whatever the max is. <laughs> right. and, and, and imagine if George W. Bush, Joseph Fair, I want your take on this. Mm -hmm. I know I'm ranting. Imagine if George W. Bush, two years after Fahrenheit 9-11, if he would have had uh, Michael Moore indicted, what would have happened? I mean, I would have come out against Bush. Well, this, this is exactly the point I've been trying to make. In fact, I, I tried to get in touch with Moore just to have him comment on it. What do you think about this? You know, and I wanted to ask the question. I never got to because he didn't want to have anything to do with it. What, what, you know, let's, let's just put the issue on the other foot. If this happened, what would you have thought? Because I, I want to, you know, I want to get to the conscience, if they have them, of the liberals who, you know, if the shoe were on the other foot, they would be looking at this and saying, oh, my gosh, this is obvious payback. This is obvious political retribution. But they can't see it when it's so obvious with Dinesh D'Souza and Ben Carson and on and on we could go. And we know the White House is using regulation and the IRS to harass their enemies. The Democrats are now on the news saying, hey, we want the IRS to shut down our competition. Get in there and do more. And th that was an amazing thing. You know, th do you know how dumb I am? I didn't figure that out until Pat Cadell made that remark. You know, <laughs> it hit me like a lightning bolt. I said, of course he's right. What am I thinking? I'm really expecting the Republican establishment to try to protect the Tea Party movement, which is, you know, at their throats. I mean, it's a bigger threat to the Republican establishment than the Democrats are. Well, of course they're going to be okay with it. Why would they have congressional investigations? Why would they, you know, why would they try to get to the bottom of this? They don't like the Tea Party movement any more than the Democrats do. WND.com, the head guy, Joseph Farah, true trailblazer in real independent media. One final short segment with him. He's a hard guy to get on. Uh, I want to talk about uh, where you think Obama's going, what you think he may try uh, on the other side, and just generally in the world, the good, the bad, and the ugly with uh, Joseph Farah of World Net Daily, because I want to you know, get your take, Joe, just basically on if you think we're going to survive this. It's, it's just getting so crazy. We'll be right back. And then your phone calls after he leaves us. And a bunch of news that's breaking I haven't even gotten to that's up on Infowars.com right now. I'm reading it. Stay with us.
looking at Obama and his presidency and the precedents it's setting, what are the stakes in your view? Uh, who was it? The, the, Martin Niemöller, who, who said, you know, first they came for the communists and I didn't speak out and, uh, because I was not a communist. And he went down the list of all, and, you know, uh, when there was no, you know, they came for me, but there was no one left to speak out for me. That's kind of where I see us right now. And I'm not, you know, look, I know what everybody's going to say as soon as you say that. Oh, are you comparing the United States to Nazi Germany? Are you comparing Obama to Hitler? No, but if we can't learn the lessons of history, you know, then you know what that means. And I think that's, that's where we are right now because, uh, you know, we talked about the Nesta Sousa, Ben Carson, and others like that. And I don't see people out in the streets angry about this. And that's exactly what Niemöller was talking about. Now, where, do, where, where does this lead? You know, we, we saw Obama tipped his hand long ago, even when he was running for president. And in his first term, you know, he talked about building a civilian national security force that was as powerful and as large as the Defense Department. What did that mean? Now we see him, you know, dismissing hundreds of senior officers in, in all the branches of the military, generals being purged. And, uh, you know, we see all kinds of, you, you, you know, you guys are doing the stories. What is all this ammunition for? For domestic, you know, uh, domestic agencies within the United States. Giant government. armored vehicles, drones. They say the main enemy is the Tea Party. Uh, hollow point bullets, the whole nine yards, right? And then they say the hollow points are for, they, they, they say they're for target practice. Yes. Who uses hollow points for target practice, right? I mean, it's crazy stuff. Where's it going? I don't know where it's going, Alex, but I do know this, that if the opposition is not united and strong against this, that it, it will ruin this country. It will be the end of this country as it has been known, you know, for 230 years. If he keeps getting away with all these dictatorial power grabs that are historic, uh, do you think there's any danger he might actually try to pull something and stay in or just put so much evil in place that he leaves and then all of his operatives just keep running things. Yeah, I think a part of him actually is going to be tired of being president. I think the bigger danger is, you know, laying the groundwork for tyranny that cannot be easily undone when he's gone. You know, with, maybe he's going to handpick a successor. I don't know. But whatever it is, we can't let it happen. I mean, we've got to be in strong opposition to this guy. That's the key. Uh, exposing. I mean, when, when he's out there bragging about using executive orders to legislate, I mean, that ought to be a sign to everybody. Liberals and conservatives alike ought to be saying, what? We have a constitution in this country. That's not what executive orders are for. And Joseph Farrow of Orlando Daily, you just brought up the key final point. With friends like Karl Rove and J John Boehner, who needs enemies? Uh, that's really the issue, is that these people are blocking any real resistance. Absolutely. In fact, I'm starting a super PAC uh, myself here uh, to, to wage war in 2014 and 2016. And I think the key is, you know, using the tools that others have used, uh, you know, in opposition to uh real competitive politics, to dominate politics, and use those tools to fight back and neutralize the Carl Rose of the world. That's something we got to do. The Republican leadership is really scared of the Tea Party. That, that shows me we have a chance of actually taking over. It's, you know, sadly, it's probably the only chance we have. There isn't enough time, Alex, as we talked about off the air, to do anything else. We can't start a party from scratch and compete with these you know, there's so many advantages this two, these, the two parties have structurally in this country. It's, you know, the only shot we have is taking over one or both of the parties. And, I, you know, I've always said take them both over. But, the, you know, the, the one we have the best shot at right now is the Republican Party. we got to do it. And that's why we, we named our super PAC Takeover. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Well, we'll be making some announcements about it shortly. But as usual... InfoWars, Alex Jones gets the scoop, even Unbe from my own mouth. <laughs> Joseph Farrow, WorldNetDaily.com, WND.com. We got 30 seconds left. What would you like to uh, leave us off with? Oh, I'm going to make my TV debut in a few weeks. On, uh, and then it's not on the Alex Jones show, oddly enough. It's on Amish Mafia. 
You ever watch Amish Mafia? You know, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I have watched an Amish Mafia episode. Yeah, well, that's a lighter note, uh, but uh, <laughs> reality show. That's hey, you got to have some fun and inject some stuff there. I got a lot of listeners that way being on some of the cable shows, and they end up coming here. So, all right, well, thank you so much for the time. We'll talk to you again soon. All right, man. God bless. Uh, hopefully, won't be in a federal prison. With, I don't know. One of those. Say my laundry's not clean enough or something. I don't know. Claim I've got a eyebrow that's too long. I don't know. So Bloomberg's mayors get angry uh, over uh, mayor blowing the whistle on gun confiscation plans. Uh, we've got the war on men, 10 ways masculinity is under attack by Paul Joseph Watson. Excellent article that I asked him to write. Cops taser deaf man having diabetic attack. I mean, this is just getting insane where somebody's autistic or mentally retarded or in a coma and they taser him. He didn't follow the order. Gee, he was foaming at the mouth on the ground. And Why don't you go taser like tombstones? Like walk up to the grave and go, rise from the dead. And then no zombie comes out and you go, taser. And then in the threat continuum training and like taser doesn't do anything. So like firearms, boom, boom, boom. And then call in airstrikes and then nuke and then blow the whole planet up because, you know, it didn't follow your order. I mean, that's the kind of, gee, we have a guy with Down syndrome who's obviously fallen off this bridge and is rolling around on the ground. I saw all these videos a year ago. Get up. The person's obviously half unconscious. Uh, uh, I said, get up. All right, I'm going to taser you. They ought to go into like the wards of people that are in vegetable states. Get up and walk. The person's totally brain dead. I said, get up and walk. And they're like... Cop pulls out a machete and goes, I told you to start hacking bloody chobs out of them. Just, you know, <laughs> trendiness. Excuse me. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Raptor, man, you've been holding a long time. So we're just going to get on down to talking to you now. Go ahead. All right, Alex. How you doing? I'm doing all right. That's a, that, that's a handle from uh, one of my favorite Stanley Kubrick movies. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I got a couple points here. Uh, you talked about the... Uh, the UK Global Strategic Trends document, 2007 to 2036 earlier. And it's very telling in the program. It's actually Global Strategic Trends Program, 2007 to 2036. And if you look at the map contained within the document, <clears throat> it has several things. Um, it has explosions over the Ukraine. It's a symbol of explosion. And there's several threat levels listed at the bottom. Uh, one of them is a coastal threat. The entire continent or the entire island of Japan is a coastal threat, along with just the west coast of America, foreshadowing Fukushima. The Gulf of uh, Mexico, coastal threat, foreshadowing. No, I've seen that map. We need to pull that up and put it back on screen for folks. Yeah, foreshadowing uh, maybe the Gulf incident, Gulf Coast the oil incident there. And also there's, a, there's one on Atlantic, and it's noticeable that the coastal threat in California ends in Canada and ends in Mexico. Japan is surrounded. Maybe it foreshadows Fukushima. I don't know. But there's something they want to do in the Atlantic. It doesn't seem to be happening yet, um, if you look at that. But also in this document, it says the overall, the middle class will be treated particularly harshly by globalization and that they will react and that Islamic terrorism will pretty much do the job until about 2020, and then we're going to react. It's very interesting. Tell your readers to look at, or your listeners to look at this map. Yeah, the easiest way to find it is type in Revolution Flash Mobs Brain Chips. That'll bring them to The Guardian. And then where is the PDF in there? I haven't looked at it in a while. Yeah, and this is kind of a vacation planner, Alex. You know, you know what? I'm going to do it. Say it real slow for me, and I'm just going to get it uh, for myself. Sure. We, were, Actually, we wrote a story, too, a grim version of the future, rebellion, flash mobs. I, I bet our article from 2007. Uh, the, the thing is, DC, DC, Global Strategic Trends Program. Yeah, I'm going to type it in. I'm gonna, hold on, I'm going to type it real slow so I can do it. I'm going to get it right now on here. Okay, just yeah, get that map. I know, I know, I know. Hold on just a second. I got to type this in. So just, I want you to say each word slowly for me, and I'm going to do it, okay? Sure. Go, ahead, go ahead to the first word. Uh, DC, DC. Huh? Global Strategic Trends yep. Program, 2007 to 2036. There's a map about page 17. Yep. I'm going to pull it up, bro. Sorry, I'm just on air, so I'm just going to get it. Yeah, yeah. 
Here it is. Uh, keep going, making your points about it. Yeah, you really got don't want to vacation in these areas, I, I would imagine. Don't plan your vacations around these areas. Look at Africa, completely destroyed. Well, they've got it all planned out, too. I mean, they basically oh, yeah, admitted it in there. exactly what they're saying. And they're saying in the document that the middle class is going to be mad and rise up, and we're going to have to put them down, basically. But they never mention why the middle class is going to rise up. Yep. It also advises using neutron bombs for... Uh, Population control. In the yeah, I know. I know. Guys, I found the document. You can go ahead and uh, punch my screen up. Thank you. Right there. Very interesting map. Yeah, I need to try Foreshadowing to... Foreshadowing a lot of the events that you talk about addresses a lot of your points. I love your team's work there, Alex. You're well, we're, we're, we're trying the best we can. Yeah, I've covered this report a lot. We should do a nightly news report on this because what's old is new. This is, and, and there's a government, U.S. government report thing that basically says the same thing. All right, caller, I appreciate you holding... Uh, to talk about that, buddy, at a certain point, man, it's just like, wow. Because then you find out they're exacerbating the problems so that they can control it. And that's super uncool, as they say. Cindy in Pennsylvania, thank you for holding her on the air. Oh, thank you. Do you hear me? Sure do, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, hey, do you ever notice that wherever the Stag Hag and uh, McCain, wherever they go, there's trouble that follows them? Well, no, they're like serious State Department black op commanders. They always have been, and they run around running these operations. Yeah, yeah, and they just continue to do it, and people just keep following them, letting them do it. And I see Washington, D.C. I don't see them as Democrats and Republicans. I see them as a two-headed snake. We need to cut those heads off. Well, yeah, and, and, then, and then we've got white blood cells trying to go in to heal things with the Tea Party, so it's all under attack by the entire double-headed monster. If the Tea Party were to rise up now, if they would do one thing and have a massive recall of everything. And it's not that the Tea Party's even perfect. It's a diverse group of people. It's that it's Constitution, common sense, knows about the globalists, knows about the U.N., and the globalists do not want that. I mean, it's the period, it is the only opposition. Right, right. But if we had a massive group of people rise up and recall all these idiots in D.C., tell them, come back, we don't want you there. I hear you, ma'am. I really appreciate your call. Let's talk to Bob in Texas. Bob, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, Alex, how are you today? Pretty good. Thanks for calling. Go ahead. Uh, you were talking about the Ukraine earlier. Uh, they had a, a Fox News pundit. I mean, he was just going crazy that we're not over there just bombing in Ukraine. I mean, that's the way the guy acted. The thing is that most people out here, Alex, I've been uh, for years now, I've been trying to wake people up to the facts around 9-11. Uh, I've been trying to wake people up to the facts of geoengineering, things that are going on in the skies above us. Sometimes I think I could set the whole damn atmosphere on fire, Alex, and, and people wouldn't even notice. Well, that's because they're poisoned. They're, they're, they're mesmerized. I mean, we're in, a, we're in a science fiction movie here, brother. Right. So, I mean, you try and talk to someone about Ukraine, which is a very, uh, is a pretty complex situation going on in the comp in, in the Ukraine. You can't get people to wake up to 9-11, to, to, to the lies that went on there. And people look at you like you're crazy or something. It is It is extremely, extremely frustrating to be awake and to see other people who aren't awake, and they think you being informed is a bad thing. Well, I'm, I'm putting on a geoengineering seminar here in my local town here. I live in Orange, Texas, uh, right on the border with Louisiana, and we are being sprayed down here just almost constantly now. Every time I get a blue blue sky, I know it's not going to last, and then by the afternoon, I've got this silvery haze all over all over the place. It's just it's disgusting, and you try to point it out to people, oh, that's airplanes, you know, and things like this. People are just so dumbed down. Uh, I, I just uh, it, sometimes it is just extremely frustrating. I, I know I've woken up a few people, and I guess I've done well at doing that. But uh, uh, it, it is just uh, you know what what what's going to take for the American people to wake up? Are they going to have to be banging down our doors before they? Before well, they, they already are. They just do it incrementally, so people aren't aware of it. I hear you, and God bless you, brother. Let me just say this as best I can to people. They wouldn't be afraid of us as opposition if they didn't have the different mathematical war games and breakdowns to know that it could end up causing them a big problem. If people ever figured out they had power, it'd be over. The average person doesn't get involved because they don't think they have any power. They're very insecure. Even the you know executives and people I know that are very wealthy uh, and are incredibly powerful are, are very insecure and very cloistered. Um, almost all of them.
People are not adventurers. People are just absolutely uh, intimidated by the complexity in the world. And, and, I, and I don't blame them. But if we can continue to expose the globalist agenda, remember just 10 years ago, most, most people didn't know that the Federal Reserve was private. Now everybody knows that. And 10 years ago, people didn't believe there was a new world order being formed. Now they're like, yeah, it's terrible. On so many issues, people now know it's true. They say, though, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to change that? So we've already gone a long way. And as things get really, really bad, if we lay the groundwork like the globalists have done, they lay it for evil, we lay it for good. If people discover why all this has happened to them, if people discover why things have gotten worse and worse and worse, and how the globalists are organizing things getting worse to consolidate power, because they want us poor and easily controllable, then it'll always backfire if we identify the enemy. We are engaged in an information war. You know, during the Cold War, we did a great job in getting America's message out. After the Berlin Wall fell, we said, okay, fine, enough of that. You know, we've done it, we're done. Um, and unfortunately, we are paying a big price for it. And our, our private media cannot fill that gap. Well, that's it's enough. The American message, do you think what Hollywood and the news puts out is an American message? What, they'll doll up tyranny with some American flags and a model? You are losing the info war, Hillary. So they have George Soros and all the usual suspects launching satellites that will beam stuff in to wherever they want and pushing for censorship here of speech they don't like. You know, they're the biggest supporters of free speech. Of course, they're against yours, though. Uh, and 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 they're 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 trying to launch all these quote alternative sites. They're all going to fall on their faces. Look, if the information on this show ends up getting out to people in a big way, and it's starting to happen, there's no way they're going to get away with this stuff, folks. It's just that it's so horrible what we're saying. I don't blame people not wanting to admit it. A scientifically designed technocracy, a dehumanizing grid. A fourth Georgia hospital is closed due to Obamacare payment cuts. Health law impact has only begun. These are decadent elites is what they are. So sick. No one in Jimmy Kimmel's audience has been able to sign up for Obamacare when he asked them. That's because no one is able to sign up for it. It's all a hoax. The idiots that think they've signed up for it haven't gotten the word yet. And we've got James O'Keefe uh, has exposed Project Veritas, another scheme to, quote, turn Texas blue through fraud. I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. And then you're like, well, I thought the Republicans are bad, too. Yeah, but they're, they're making their move with the Democrats. They don't even want two parties that they control. They want one party. So there's no way to get out of this stuff. It's just a gang of crooks. They don't need to produce things. They need to just take over and then they run everything. You don't need to become Henry Ford to be a major industrialist. You should get into government and shut down your competition and give yourself all the business. Makes me sick. It's slavery is what it is. Steve in Chicago, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh First of all, a uh, little bumper music. I recommend It's Good News Week by Hedgehoppers Anonymous, an RAF dive bomber combo. You know, they would say, um, it's good news week. Someone's got to drop some bear, uh, uh, a bomb somewhere and contaminate the atmosphere. I'm not going to go into it. The other one, I think, um, what's the meaning of this song? It's a strange, strange world we live in, Master Jack. Well, they... Uh, you, you take a current ribbon from out of the sky and taught me how to use it as the years go by uh, to make up all your problems and make them seem uh, people believe and then to sell them in the people in the street. And it goes on. But the reason why I called up, you were talking about Julia Timoshenko. Whatever happened to her that was uh, in the Ukraine, they imprisoned her. Uh, I guess the KGB did. They wouldn't give her medical care. And uh, she was supposed to go to Germany, and you never hear about it. She was like the president of Ukraine. I know. They just snatch people off the street now all over Europe. You name it. By the way, McGruff, you just called in under the gnome de plume, Steve. McGruff, the crime dog, gets 16 years for having 100, no, excuse me, 1,000 pot plants and a grenade launcher. Now, I know you're the older McGruff, the original McGruff sound guy. 
Uh, do you know the new McGruff guy this happened to? Uh, no, not personally. No. What, another thing you, you pointed, about, uh, pointed out about the European Union, the idea, the concept really came from a Pierre Du Bois. And he was a Norman who lived from uh, 1250 to 1312. And he was, uh, um, well, he proposed that all the Christian nations of the world unite, uh, the Western European, and that the uh, French uh, uh, king be, be the leader of it. So that, that was uh, one of the forerunners um, to, to create a, a, a crusade against the, uh, the Holy Land, you know, because it was taken Well, it is true the, the Vatican is a signature to the European Union uh, first event in 57 in the Treaty of Rome uh, when they actually set it up. Of course, they didn't admit the EU existed until about 1999. They talk to the public like they're children. I mean, it is just so frustrating to see a group of... The public's about like lobotomized children that have had a high dosage of PCP. Uh, listen, McGruff, in the voice of McGruff, will you tell me that, um, I want you to talk like Darth Vader, but in the voice of McGruff, I want you to say, we will end this destructive conflict. I want you to say, we will end this destructive conflict and bring order to the galaxy. Uh, we will end this destructive uh, conflict and, and bring an end to it. No, no, no. We will end this destructive conflict. Let me, let me actually try to say it. We will end this constructive conflict and bring order to the galaxy. And bring order to the galaxy. And you don't want you to say it in a British accent. When you say it in McGruff, I want you to say, this is McGruff. Yeah. Go ahead and say we. Okay. Go ahead and say it. McGruff. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, we'll bring this disorder to an end. We'll create a new, a new world. And it'll be a utopianistic world. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And what is a utopianistic world, McGruff? we got 20 seconds. Well, that was the king of Bohemia, George of uh, Pody Brady. He, uh, he also uh, uh, hypothesized as an anti-papist movement. Uh, he sent a, an emissary by the name of Leo Ro Rosemittal uh, out to the European <laughs> courts. <laughs> with, with a... <laughs> McGruff, i got to go. We're premiering on air right now, dealing with the Bill of Rights and Constitution. How informed is the public? I'm down here on the campus of the University of Texas in Austin. We are asking students whether or not they know their Bill of Rights. Can either of you name any of the Bill of Rights? Um, most of them. Not under pressure. Not under pressure. <laughs> Do you think it might be important to know the Bill of Rights? Yeah. Why? Is it the first ten amendments to the Constitution? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the first one? Um. The, the most important reason why you need to learn them is because your generation may see the last of them. So it's really important that you know what your rights are so that you can do something to hold on to them. All right. Thanks. Will you do that for me? Yeah. yeah. Sir, can you name me the Bill of Rights? Not today. Sorry. He's too Not cool, today. man. That guy's so trendy. I guess America can wait. Ma'am, can you name me the Bill of Rights? These people are totally helpless. The Bill of Rights. Uh, but the right to... Uh, I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> Come on, look stupid. This is why the elites take us down. The right to down. a fair, fair and speedy trial? Wow, you he must got have one. Been in, in court recently. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> have experience with that one. Ma'am, can you name me the Bill of Rights? No, these are all too cool. Trendy, They're all you know. TV heads. No. Uh, the right to bear arms. The right to bear arms? What? Gentlemen, uh, Bill of Rights, name any of them? Nothing. Go Canada. Go Canada. Okay. They're all ultra uh, cool. Do you know your Bill of Rights? I'm talking to a mannequin. Ma'am, Bill of Rights? Oh, no. The Bill of Rights? Yeah. <laughs> the American Bill of Rights? No. Shame on you. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll give you one. Which one? One through ten. Just pick one. Mm, five. Five. You have the right to not say anything if you've been incriminated. To zip it until you get a lawyer. Okay. Then still do that. Remember, remember that. It may come in handy. Who knows? It could come in handy in the next 20 minutes. Okay. All right. Number one, freedom of the press. TV speech, killed everybody. Religion. These people aren't even people. They, they Beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. It's a beautiful thing being an American. The isn't life force is gone. Rights. They're not even people. Yeah. Well, shame on us for not knowing them, right? You yeah, is right.
Okay, go 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 revisit. Things they're so rights. nice though. They're so ready to be Bill destroyed. Name any of the Bill of Rights. I have to go to class. Sorry. Yeah, go right. to class. Bill of Rights. I really want to stop and talk to you, but I have to go to class right now. Yes, very trendy. Can you guys name any of the uh, Bill of Rights? Uh, you ever heard of those? Yes, of course. Uh, lo love Infowars, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, first is the freedom to speech. Um, includes uh, freedom of religion. Uh, you also have the uh, the freedom against unlawful searches and seizures. Tenth Amendment to uh, the all rights not allotted to uh, the federal government should be allowed uh, the states. Reserved to the states or to the people, the respectively. Have the power to, to legislate Good job, their own. one of our listeners. Well, whoever's paying for your education, I salute them. I am a true organic man. I'm an endangered species. Can you name any of the uh, Bill of Rights? Um, can you remind me what the Bill of Rights is? I really don't think it's an issue for the government to have information, but at the same time, you know, is, oh my gosh. you know. Well, how, how, how about this? He thinks the government's I inside have is, the right like, like the government's like him, have a the nice guy. Have my information. I have a Fourth Amendment. Okay. Right. I, I have I have I have right to privacy, and whether or not you don't care doesn't matter to me. That's right, Personally, dumbass. I don't want that in my life, and that's my right. Now just as go an ahead and punch him in the citizen. nose. So they have no <laughs> right to take that away. Do you want to punch him in the nose like I do? I mean, I can't argue with that. <laughs> I mean, that's the Bill of Rights, America. The Bill of Rights. Can you name any of them? Look at these are you, sloths. Are you aware that you're paying for a college education? The most slothful people are downtown when Be I drive through there. Be very aware, ladies and UT. gentlemen. This next generation coming down the pike doesn't really know their Bill of Rights. That means when it comes time to defend this country or defend themselves, they have no idea what to do. There'll be more on the nightly news tonight, 7 o'clock central, prisonplanet.tv. If you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance.